Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video I want to answer a tech support question that was recently passed my way uh, involving <clears throat> trying to flatten a part, but it's non-native to Inventor, so it's not a sheet metal file. So there's a couple ways we can handle this, but this customer threw me a bit of a curveball, or I should say their customer maybe threw them a bit of a curveball. And you'll see when I open up this IGES file, I can't reference or convert it, which is kind of interesting. And that's because it's a surface model. Da, 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 da. So they built a composite surface. So of course we can't really do much with this. It's not a solid per se. So if this had been a regular solid step file or some other file, we could easily convert it and then go from there. So what I would uh, recommend, a couple things. Number one, it's okay to go back to people and say, hey, could you send me a solid model? That, that may be best if you're planning on fabricating from it anyway. But <clears throat> if you can't do that, the second thing I would suggest is that we can convert this into a solid by coming over to our browser here, right-clicking on the composite body, and we're going to use the repair bodies environment. So this is kind of old school when we have to do repairs and things. Uh, we could take a converted model and we could add our own boundary patches. We can delete faces. We could do different types of things here. This one's a pretty nice one, so it won't be too bad. But what we need to do is we have to unstitch everything. So I want to unstitch this surface. Go ahead and hit apply, or I guess, you know, and done. So now it's individual pieces. And then we simply have to stitch it back together. But before that, we could look for errors, or even if we do the stitch process, as we're putting things together, we can say, hey, just take a look at finding any kind of gaps. Now, again, this originally started as a sheet metal model, so we should be in good shape. And <clears throat> when I go ahead and complete this, just selecting all the faces, there's no gaps. I hit OK. It converts it to a solid. It's now a base solid. So this gives us lots more options for doing sheet metal operations, etc. So if I sit here and finish the repair, now we can convert this to a sheet metal part. And when we do that, it tries to set the thickness. So we could try to pick a base face. Sometimes that works <clears throat> and it grabs the thickness. If that doesn't work though, we could always check this, uncheck this box, select that. You can either delete it or whatever. And then we can measure one of the edges to get the thickness as well. So if it doesn't work the first time, you can always measure it yourself. You can, of course, if you already have a 48 thousandths rule, you could use whatever rules you might have. Same thing with the unfolding criteria. You could select whatever unfold criteria that you want. I'm not going to get into the sheet metal rules today. But if we go ahead and set that thickness, now we can create a flat pattern. And indeed, it flattens the shape. So that's the idea of taking a surface model and being able to flatten it to get whatever we need to at the end. So, kind of a different operation today. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.